One Turtle's Last Straw, The Real Life Rescue That Sparked a Sea Change Written by Elsa Boxer Illustrated by Marta Alvarez McGuinness What if one small choice had the power to save the world? One Turtle's Last Straw, The Real Life Rescue That Sparked Sea Change The boy sucks up the last drops of the drink through his straw. After one more satisfied slurp, he tosses the cup in the trash. Heavy winds come whipping by, lifting the cup out of the trash can, swirling it in the air, smashing it to the ground, sending it spinning toward the street until it stops in a storm drain. The straw slips into the sewer. Underground, it meanders for miles through a maze of steel pipes, then spits out into a stream, winding its way to the ocean. In that same ocean, a sea turtle soars. His front flippers fly him through the water with long, sweeping strokes. Until a traveler net, trapped, dragged along the ocean floor, he starts to run out of air. He needs to get back to the surface to breathe or he will drown. Tangled. Each furious flap of his flippers only wraps more rope around his shell. He twists, he turns. One flipper comes free, but the other is still stuck. Gasping now, not much air left. Struggling, spinning, spinning, unwinding. He wriggles free just in time, right before running out of oxygen. He speeds up to the surface to fill his lungs with a full breath. Freedom, fresh air, finally. Hungry after his harrowing escape, the turtle dives down to the ocean floor to find food. Crunch! His sharp beak snags a crab scuttling across the seabed. Satisfied, he swallows his catch. Along with it, he slurps up a mouthful of seaweed, seawater, which as usual, flows up and out of his nose. But something gets stuck. <coughs> something hard. <coughs> Something he accidentally gobbled up along with the crab. <coughs> he tries to throw it up, but he gags and chokes. Part of the object is wedged up his nose. The other part is stuck down his throat. He can barely breathe. He begins to lose his sense of smell, which he needs to find food. For weeks, he struggles to eat, struggles to breathe, struggles to survive. And then a research mission is underway in the waters off Costa Rica. Marine biologists are studying an endangered species, the olive ridley sea turtle. The scientists spot one swimming near the surface. They bring him on aboard. He has something sticking out of his nostrils. A barnacle, maybe? Dr. Nathan Robinson, one of the researchers, take out a pair of pliers. He twists the object, trying to pry it loose. But it's not a barnacle. He pulls. I don't want to pull too hard, says Nathan. I don't know what it's attached to. It's in deeper than they thought. Had it hooked into the turtle's brain? A worm? One of them wonders. 
the turtle starts squirming and sneezing. Out comes a small section of what looks like a stick and the turtle squeezes his eyes shut in pain. The, re the researchers snip off a sample of the stick and examine it. They see faded stripes. Don't tell me it's a straw, said Dr. Christine Fagener, a machine marine biologist who spent her career studying sea turtles. She's also been trying to warn the world about plastic products and how they can hurt marine life. It can't be a straw, she thinks as she films the scene with her phone. They keep pulling. The turtle hisses and winces, and a trickle of blood spills out of his nose and falls onto the floor of the boat. I'm so sorry, baby, Christine says. They pull out another inch. They see the turtle struggling, but they know they're saving his life. They pull some more. At last, all four inches of the objects come out. The turtle opens his eyes. He stops squirming, stops sneezing, stops hissing. He starts breathing freely. It's a plastic straw. No one on the boat has ever seen anything like this. They stop the bleeding, make sure the sea turtle is safe, and set him free. His front flippers fly him through the water with long, sweeping, satisfied strokes. In silence, they watch him swim away. Many months later, at a restaurant halfway around the world, a girl and her mother place an order. The server starts towards the kitchen, but then the girl remembers something, a video. She stops the server. I'll skip the straw, she says. Hello, my name is Megan Solka, and I just got done reading to you One Turtle's Last Straw, The Real Life Rescue That Sparked a Sea Change, written by Elsa Boxer, illustrated by Marta Alvarez McGinnis. So, now that we got done reading, I have a question for you. What is the theme of our book? What was the message that the author wanted to give to their audience? Yes, that's right. Our theme of this story was about recycling. Recycling is good for the environment. The turtle, for example, in our story, it talked about how when the turtle was out looking for food, it accidentally ate a straw. And it was saying how straws are good to put in a separate bin from our trash in our homes to recycle. Recycling means to reuse something for another purpose than it was meant to be. Here's a way to recycle. So at home, you can put plastic materials in one bin in your house and old food or paper in different bins compared to other materials. Plastic materials like milk jugs, cottage cheese containers, juice bottles, plastic water bottles, and straws. You can put them in a separate container. Or another way to recycle is to put paper products into their own separate bin. Products like newspapers, we can cut back on plastic or paper plates and use dishes. We can use cloth napkins, the ones that we can just easily wash and dry in the dryers instead of paper ones. After reading magazines, we can put them into the recycling bin or we can pass them on to other people. So here's an activity that you can do at home. Say you have a, new, a magazine that gets, sent, that gets sent to your house. Something you can do is you can ask friends and neighbors after you're done reading it, if they would like to read it, pass it on to someone else rather than them going out and getting a copy of it themselves. That's cutting back on them buying it. And then after you're done with it, instead of you throwing it away, you can give it to someone else to enjoy. 
or if you would not like to receive those magazines at your house, if you go to your local library, they would have these magazines. It can help cut back on the paper products or even plastic instead of going through a lot of plastic water bottles that you can get from the store. You can get a reusable water bottle that would cut back on like 12 wa plastic water bottles compared to one water bottle. These are just some activities. So here's a challenge. What are ways that you could do at home that would help with recycling? Recycling in your community, at home. How could you encourage other people to recycle?